Hi guys, welcome to the second section of the course where you will understand about what is a database. Did you ever imagine the speed at which our data is growing? There is so much data being generated around us. Let me give you some very common examples from our daily lives. For example, you might have observed increased phone calls, increased WhatsApp or chat messages, increased email conversations, increased social media usage, increased e-commerce and online shopping, increased e-learning like this one, and increased online presence. Now, because of all these increased uh, phone calls, messages, email conversations, social media, e-commerce, online shopping, uh, don't you think there should be a need to store the data? Now, the question arises or the main question that comes out is, what is the need to store data? Of course, we have a lot of data that is being generated. That's perfectly okay. But the question is, what is the need to store the data? So first of all, to view the history data. For example, you want to refer something back into the history. We need data to be stored so that we can refer it back. So to view the history data, we need to store the data. Next, to check past communication for email, messages, texts, or any other kind of communication, we need to store that kind of communication so that we can retrieve our old emails, old messages, old uh, text messages which you send to your friends or family. Next, to maintain social media platforms. Now, for example, you post something on Facebook or you post something on Instagram, uh, we need to store that data somewhere, right? So that you can review what all things you have posted in your profile from the time you had created your profile. Next, to analyze user shopping taste and provide more products. You might have observed like when you are browsing for a product, uh, whether it is Amazon or any other online shopping uh, website, when you try to look for a product, you also get some suggested products. Now from where the uh, websites like Amazon get to know uh, about the suggested products or what products to be suggested to a customer. So this all depends on data-driven approach, what types of products or what type of categories of uh, products you search online. Next, to understand what customer wants and create products around it. Now, this is again a data-driven approach in the online world nowadays. With the data analytics, more and more uh, businesses are coming up with new products depending on uh, the customer taste, what exactly customer wants. And the last reason to store the data is for data analytics. Now, again, the same example that I gave you earlier, depending on the customer taste, businesses are creating products around the customer taste. Now, this all comes out of data analytics. So here I have an old graph that displays global data growth until 2015. I couldn't find a new one, so I thought I'll use this graph, and I think this pretty much uh, solves the intent that I want to show you. Uh, can you actually see the exponential growth of data in just 10 years, like from 2005 to 2015, you just see how the graph is kind of like exploding over the years, it, it's not even double, triple, it's even more than 10 times uh, the growth. It's, it's literally an exponential uh, growth of data. So comparatively to 2005, in 2015, we had a kind of like zettabytes of data which is generated online. So think about how many people uh, are joining the online communities, uh, uh, getting onto internet, uh, using internet into their day-to-day -day life, whether it is shopping or emailing, messaging, or anything. So this is the uh, digital data explosion that has happened in, in kind of like past 10 or 15 years. Now, according to one of the sites online, for large-scale companies and multinational organizations, 
the situation becomes even more complex and challenging to manage huge amounts of data. Great. Now, another says there are many sources that predict exponential data growth towards 2020 and beyond. The size of the digital universe will double every two years at least. A 50-fold growth from 2010 to 2020. Now, this picture, or I think this graph, this summarizes what I just told. So it's like a volume in exabytes. We are not even talking about zettabytes. It's in exabytes. And like around 2020, uh, it will grow close to like 50 times when compared to the amount of data that we had in 2010 probably. Now that we have a pretty good understanding of data growth and why it is important to store data, the next big question is where do we store the data? So till now it was all about how much data is being generated, from where the data is being generated, the estimate growth of the data around 2020 but still the main question again comes in where do we store the data of course you might have already guessed it by now yes it is database before I start talking about database and give you the actual definition of database let us look at one example now this is uh, one of my favorite examples of course, this is completely out of the topic, but I think in a way this example relates to what I want to convey. Now, if you want to go to your neighbor's house, you would probably go by walk, right? Now, if you want to meet a friend staying next block, you might choose to uh, you know, go on bicycle or maybe you can choose to go on bike. If you want to go out with family to visit a relative, you could probably choose to uh, go by your own car or maybe with the public transport, right? Now, if you want to go to your office, you might choose a metro or a subway. And if you want to go to other country, you would uh, choose airplane or ship. Now, it depends. Uh, depending on the situation, you use the type of transportation, right? So, these are just general choices. You can basically choose any transport type based on need, cost and situation, correct? Now, if you look back closely, the solution depends upon the travel distance, cost, feasibility and some other factors. I repeat, the solution depends upon the travel distance, cost, feasibility and some other factors. Now let us relate this with data size and tools that can help you to store data. So in a way I am kind of relating the example with a data. So let's take you want to create a to-do list or a grocery items list or maybe you want to create or write down your goals or maybe you want to create a simple checklist. So what tools you can use? You can use a notepad or maybe you can use MS Office like MS Word. Next, you want to uh, do a personal finance planner or a budget planner. You might uh, go with uh, MS Excel or MS Word or MS Access, right? Because in personal finance, you need some calculations. So I think MS Excel will be much more better. Now, you are starting up your own company. You want to store some data very small uh, client data and very small employees data, you would probably go with MS Office. Uh, again, MS Access is the product which will be easy to store uh, data. But when things grow, let's take you are going for an e-commerce data or banking or healthcare operations, uh, sorry, healthcare applications, then comes the database. So it might be MySQL, it might be Oracle, uh, it might be Microsoft SQL Server, anything depending on again cost, feasibility and other factors. So once again, the data storage solution depends upon the size of the data, complexity of the data, transactions per second and many more factors. This is a simple example I tried to show you in which situation what tools can be used. 
Similarly, in e-commerce data or a banking or a healthcare application, generally people will go with databases. Now, after this example, this brings us back to the same question. What is a database? And before I give you my definition of database, let us look at what other websites have to say about it. A database is a collection of information that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed and updated. The next one we have from Wikipedia, it is like a database is an organized collection of data. The next definition about database that we have from guru99.com, it is database is a systematic collection of data. Database supports storage and manipulation of data. Databases make data management easy. Ultimately, let me give you another simple example. See, you have Uber, right? Uh, I think uh, most of the countries, they have Uber. Uber is like a taxi booking app. So you need a taxi, you, you open Uber, you book a taxi and you travel. You want to watch some online videos, you log on to YouTube, you watch some videos and enjoy. The same way, like for a particular type of need, there are particular type of applications. So Uber is a taxi booking application. YouTube is a online video application. The same way, a database is also an application that is used to store and manage huge amounts of data. So the ultimate definition that I can personally give you about what exactly is a database is, a database is a software that is used to store data in structured and unstructured format. A database also simplifies the way we manage our data.